Hi, um, welcome to the third of these Ask Mark sessions. So as usual, the mentors have selected four questions and I'm going to address each of them in turn. Uh, here comes the first question. Professor Solms, could you please explain the difference between consciousness and wakefulness? And why do you think the reticular activating system is not just wakefulness, as Giuseppe Maruzzi and Horace Magoon thought it was? Well, the reason that Magoon and Maruzzi thought that the reticular activating system was um, responsible for wakefulness was because it was such a surprise that it was responsible for consciousness at all. Um, they, like everyone those days, thought that consciousness was cortical, that it came in, uh, uh, streamed in through the senses, um, which then project onto the cortex. Everyone knew that. When they then found that there was this very primitive mechanism deep in the core of the brainstem, which somehow seems responsible for switching on all of that upper type of consciousness, uh, they did what scientists um, since time immemorial have done. Uh, they tried to preserve the old theory in the face of contradictory facts. And so they fudged it. And so they said, well, uh, we still believe that the contents of consciousness are um, generated in the cortex. Um, and we'll call this other thing that we found, we'll call it wakefulness. Um, and what that meant was that the qualities of consciousness are attached to the cortex um, uh, and are synonymous with the modalities of sensory perception um, and that the wakefulness aspect that the brainstem contributes is merely quantitative. It's without quality. Now that's the core of the matter. That's where I disagree with them. Um, the, to put it sort of flippantly, it turns out that it feels like something to be awake. Wakefulness is not a merely quantitative dimension. It is a state. Um, it is a state which has quality, and that quality is affective. Uh, when you say that the contents of consciousness are derived from the five classical sensory modalities, first of all, it leaves out of account that there is a sixth content, a sixth quality to consciousness, and that is emotional feelings, affects. Uh, they, too, exist. They, too, are part of the contents, the, the ingredients, the palette uh, of the qualities of, of consciousness, and they clearly do not come from the outside world. Affects are not about the outside world. They're about yourself. Affects represent the state of the subject. It doesn't represent, they don't represent um, the state of the objects outside of us, but rather our own response to those objects or our own attitude to those objects. So uh, the fact that affect is left out of account um, in the model which, uh, which equates um, content with cortex and, and uh, level uh, with brainstem is the first uh, problem. The second problem is that when you stimulate those brainstem structures, they generate affects. They, they, it's, they don't just generate uh, quantities of consciousness. The extreme case is the periaqueductal gray, which is a very ancient, very primitive upper brainstem structure. When you stimulate it in every vertebrate, um, and in us humans, we can, say, we can say what it feels like. You stimulate the ventral columns, it's exquisitely pleasurable. You stimulate the dorsal columns, it is absolutely excruciating. And this always applies. So this is the most intense wakefulness type consciousness producing structure that there is. Because if you lesion that structure, uh, it's the smallest area which, when damaged, leads to a total loss of consciousness. So what that shows is this quantitative dimension, this level, uh, this wakefulness aspect of consciousness is synonymous with affectivity, with the missing part um, in, in regard to um, the old view that content comes from the outside. You must remember that the that qualities, in, that is to say, comes from the outside, the qualities of consciousness. You must remember that psychiatrists um, who are, after all, dealing not with wakefulness, but rather with feelings, the drugs, the most common drugs like antidepressants and antipsychotics, they act on those upper brainstem reticular activating system structures. That's proof enough 
that, um, that we're dealing with something more than wakefulness. To sum up, I think that we never would have attributed mere wakefulness to the reticular activating system if it wasn't for the fact that by the time we discovered its contribution to consciousness, we had already attributed the contents and qualities of consciousness to other structures. So we were trying to, we were trying to fit the reticular activating system into a pre-existing schema uh, rather than accepting that our pre-existing schema was wrong. Had we started uh, our discovery of the brain mechanisms of consciousness with the discovery of the role that the reticular activating system plays, then we would have realized what is the true state of affairs, which is that the upper brain stem generates all consciousness and that the primary form of consciousness is affect and that only secondarily it activates those upper cortical structures and then bestows quality on the otherwise unconscious information processing tasks that they perform. That formulation is consistent with the evidence, um, with all the evidence. The reason we didn't come to it in the first place was merely a historical accident and convention. And we have to get beyond that. We have to, we have to move to um, an understanding of consciousness which fits better with all the facts. Okay, so that's, uh, that's question one.